Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. This is Stranger Palooza. We're in Middlebury with how Nick. Doing? Nick, how you doing? Doing well. Doing well. Welcome Good. back to Middlebury. Yep. Thanks for having us. Absolutely, as always. Yeah. Now, you just got really dirty. Yep, that's okay. Because we're doing a follow-up. Yep. <laughs> so explain to folks what we're following up on here. Absolutely. So one of the big videos that I think we've most recently done is that the tire, uh, swapping out the tire, first crack at it. We did this dry run, and we wanted to do it dry run. I struggled with the breaker bar, which the bottle jack go in first mm -hmm. and second. So I really like that video. Safety is always important, especially to new buyers, single, single owners. So after we did that video, a couple questions came back in. Okay, if I prefer a floor jack, um, where are the positions preferred by Ford to jack up your transit yeah. chassis? So basically what we're going to show you guys here is what are your jacking points if you are using like an actual full-size floor, floor jack, right? So yeah. we're going to show you that. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to show you is real time. We're not going to sit here and, and be spoiled. I could have lifted it up on our lift and mm -hmm. we could have just pointed here. No, this is real life. One of the things you're going to notice is we're doing this without the running boards on for, for better visuals. Mm -hmm. um, but this is exactly how you use a floor jack on your, on your transit chassis. We're going to get into it right now. Lola and I are now official brand ambassadors for Coachman Class B. So I wanted to take a moment to tell you guys why we, as Vanasaurs, like it says on our t-shirt, are very excited about our partnership with Coachman Class B. First off, Coachman RVs has been a leader to the great outdoors since 1964. So next is the fact that Coachman really cares about you as an owner, whether you bought new or used, after you buy your van, they really take care of you. With Coachman Class B, you have all the options. Coachman builds on all three van platforms. On the Mercedes Sprinter is the Coachman Galleria. The Ford Transit is the Coachman Beyond. And Ram Pro Master is the Coachman Nova. Lastly, best value for money. We've had our van for two years and Coachman builds to the highest standards of quality and craftsmanship. You can't go wrong with a Coachman Class B. So if you're interested, check out the link in our description and find the Coachman van that it's best for you. All right, so what's the first things we need to know with the jack? So another question, mm -hmm. this is kind of impromptu. Okay. Do we think that the OEM bottle jack has a lifespan? All right, okay, good question. Okay, we were talking about yes. that this morning. I got a lot of that. Yep, so yes. according to Ford chat rooms and whatnot, if you're not using that bottle jack other than to once in a while, jack up your van, you're gonna be fine. If you're like one of my buddies um, that takes the bottle jack out of his car <laughs> and uses, yeah, uses it for it muddle for things every week uh -huh. in his shop, that seal's gonna break down. So there's okay. question number one that came up. Okay. And, then, and then today is uh, the question on, you know, if my transit's in need and I want to use a floor jack, mm -hmm. where are the best positions? So we demonstrated that, but for some people, that, the jack that we used is a 3.5 ton yeah. service jack. Right. You can get these in aluminum. You can get them one ton, mm -hmm. one and a half ton. So this is on the very large end scale. I doubt anybody's going to have this in their van. Yeah, because I'm thinking, where would you, where would a person yep. store this? Yep. Yeah. But they make, mm -hmm. they make them this big yep. by that wide down at Bristol Auto Parts in aluminum. Mm -hmm. They're a little on the expensive side because they're made of aluminum but they're easy. We've got some benefits. If you're in a beyond, mm -hmm. you've got four sets of wheels in the back mm -hmm. or four wheels in the back, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Nova might be a little bit more prevalent to, to carry a jack with you per se. Okay. Um, but again, yeah. tire failure is a big deal whether you're in your daily driver or in a class B like uh, Hank went through. Mm -hmm. So, and he's yeah. not the only one, so. Yeah, so either, don't do what I did. <laughs> Go to a tire place and have some professionals look at it and deal with it. If you do have the jack there though, and you want to do it yourself, mm -hmm. this is how you would go about it. Or even if, you know, sometimes the tow truck or whatever comes out and they don't know where to Correct. put that. So that's what we get into here, Correct. right? So we had a couple customers on the channel that asked what to do, what to do with a heavy duty floor jack. Mm -hmm. So here's what to do with a heavy duty floor jack. I'm coming, it looks like best access will be coming from front of the rear. We are on passenger side now. 
also right under, what is this, like a, tra um, it's part of the transmission. This is basically your rear, uh, some, you know, not mechanically. Nope, mechanically nothing, just your training housing. Just your, okay, tra yep. your transmission housing. And okay. that's where there's really nowhere good, because I'm on shock. Right. Uh, strut, strut there. There's really no other good access. So this is the strongest point this to be lift the whole back end. Strongest and lowest. Strongest and lowest. Because we could stroke out here. Right. We had to. But it's a but lot. This is, you yep. Yeah. You so so far. Lola, watch your head. You can start seeing movement. Now, of course, we would use uh, jack stands mm -hmm. in a normal environment. Right. Uh, you might not have jack stands with you on the road, yeah. Um, but if you're doing this in your driveway, anywhere else where you would have the opportunity to have jack stands, once this is up, get your jack stands underneath. We're not going to mm -hmm. jack this up um, without jack stands. We'll mm -hmm. just bring it up just a little bit. Okay. You can see, see the light under the tire? Yeah, so we've got, you see that? The tires Four are free. Cranks. And they, sh they should, so here, I'll spin it. Yeah. Or if you spin one, yep. we'll see. There you go. I mean, you can't really. Everything's it's it's yep. all wheel drive, so yep. it's locked up. But four, 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 <laughs> yeah. five with this, mm -hmm. and, and you're up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, so you should be able to get those. Yep. If you, if it was your back, you'd be able to get yep. it off. Lola. Lola, come out. Yep. Come out from underneath. Watch your noggin all the way out. Watch your head, sweetie. There you go. Now sit right there. Yep. Just gonna Take ease drop. it down. Safety first. Okay. All right, so we're going to roll in some footage of this, but we'll start in the back. So if you're jacking up the back, you've got your big dualies here yep. in the back. Yep. What are you looking for when you go under? Good question. Up front, I know he asked me back. Up mm -hmm. front, we're going to be able to do a driver's side of a bracket that will be pictured mm -hmm. and a passenger side. Mm -hmm. What's different in the back end, there's going to be one single point under the transmission linkage mm -hmm. that's beefed up a little bit, that mm -hmm. that's where we want so you to do So that big it. transmission, like bell housing yep. looking thing. Yep, okay. and then there's a there's a protector. It's about, it's mm -hmm. about twice the size of a hockey puck. Mm -hmm. That's where we want to position it, the jack for both sides. And what we found is coming from the front side, the front side of the rear axle. Yeah. So you go past your wheels. Yep. So coming to the back here, you're yep. saying you want to be forward of yeah. these dualies, right? Absolutely. It's going to be a okay. little bit too much of a stretch here mm -hmm. uh, for a, a jack. On the driver's side, you're going to have the exhaust. So mm -hmm. I really like clean access right to that uh, hockey puck location centered underneath the transmission. And again, yeah. Keep in mind, you're going to have some running board clearance on a finished van, about two to three inches. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, pretty simple. Okay, so you want to get under there, regardless of what size you want to side you want to lift. You want to get under that bell housing, right in, mm -hmm. right in the bottom of it. Yep. There's a, like you said, a reinforcement yep. plate. Get up on that, yep. jack it up. Now, okay. one other thing. I think you mentioned this in our video, mm -hmm. and I hear some folks, customers at the rallies and whatnot. I always check my tires. Mm -hmm. I always check my tire pressure. I've never heard that come out of your mouth yet. Mm -hmm. But some of our older, mm -hmm. more seasoned, more... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's got a tire pressure monitoring it, it system. Does. If it goes off, then I fill it back up. Gotcha. Yeah, but, but I let the computer you, do the work. You see yeah. you see the guys going around <laughs> yeah. before yes. they left Ocala and whatnot? Right. No, I don't do that, no. <laughs> now, that's something we do here. Oh, we're, okay. we're in trailer country. My Class B plant doesn't have as many screws in it as, it, as a travel trailer, a fifth wheel. Mm -hmm. So what do I do every day? You're I, check, I, I check my tires for screws. Mm -hmm. And right now, I've had a leak for five days. It mm -hmm. kept pressure. It's a Ford. Mm -hmm. Kept pressure at 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's only supposed to be at 35. Mm -hmm. But since I've got the rally and all this stuff going, uh -huh. I'm leaving it at 50. Now it's starting to dive bomb. Oh, I see. And so it's something that we all got to pay yeah. attention to because yeah. who wants to mess with a tire right. issue? So, yeah. you know, checks and balances, safety checks. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some safety seminars going on, first-time mm -hmm. owners. Tires are a big deal. It is. Tires are a big deal. Yeah, this is a big deal. I wish I knew about this because the big thing that happened to us is when it happened, we didn't know what was wrong. Because right. if you physically look at the tires, they don't look like yep. anything is wrong. Yep. And just the steering wheel was yep. going. Yep. So, okay, good to know. So now, if, uh, moving up front, if you want to get the front up, correct. you know, and depending on what side, yep. it's still, there. You, there's like a beam under yep. there? There's a beam on? right okay. behind the engine compartment. Mm -hmm. um, very sturdy, very beefed up. You don't want to go to any of the, the suspension drops. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you see a shock shackle, yeah. let's not jack there. 
So here you're going up on this cross beam yep. that is, is this a um, suspension cross beam? Uh, it looks like it's, it's tying into the tie rods. I'm not going forward to the tie rods. I'm not going forward to the engine um, platform. No stress is happening on this bar. You're not seeing any flex or anything on this bar, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have more downward suspension. Mm -hmm. So to really get this up off the ground, yeah, you're gonna be not the travel of that. So there you go. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'll have some serious jacking. Yeah. Here. So we're we're like six in. Yeah. Seven. There, there. The chassis just moved. Yep. For safety reasons, we're I'm um, seeing daylight through the tread. Yeah. I'm seeing a little light through the front tire. Yep. Okay. And you just really need to go a little bit higher. A little bit higher. Really I just, much, enough to spin it. Yep. Nice and easy. See all that travel that we didn't have in the rear? Mm -hmm. That's intended. So here you could go center or left or right, right? Or driver side, passenger side? Um, probably for reach, just go past that bend. Okay, so now we're on the driver side. Right there, just in case we didn't see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right after that curve. Yep, that's where we're gonna be most structurally sound. Right. Coming right off the chassis, coming right off the tie rod shackle. Get it perfect. Okay. Now, also keep in mind, this unit does not have running boards on it. Okay, mm -hmm. you're not gonna be able to get as much stroke yeah, with your running board. Your running board's gonna be here, so if I'm doing it in 10 strokes up front, you're probably gonna have to go to 12 to 15. Okay. Okay, so right there. Yeah, because you're not. Great, easy spot. Okay. No, there's a shock, uh, I wouldn't go there. Mm -hmm. This is a very built up part of the front end of the chassis. I wouldn't go anywhere more forward okay. than that. Okay. okay? The one thing that you'll see, that you'll see in the video, we did about five to seven pumps or cranks, whichever, mm -hmm. for the back, and we got up, mm -hmm. but there's not as much suspension. We have yet to add sumo suspension on mm -hmm. this, otherwise we get a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, give, give and take there yeah. too. So you'll mm -hmm. see in the video we went to the front, we had to do about twice to fight the drop from the suspension, of the OEM yeah. suspension, so. Right. Yeah. And then once again, you were saying in that video, um, have some stands or... Yeah, um, you know, you never want to go, I'm not so much worried for the front tire because mm -hmm. you should be able to, the two, the two fronts, you should be able to access that bracket. I Don't put it on the bend, put it on the return of the bend. We'll see that in the video. But when you go to the rear, since we're going off one point, we got to make sure we have something safe-wise to brace the chassis from mm -hmm. coming down. Yeah. You're not going to have to worry about it so much in the front, safety always. Mm -hmm. But in the back, I would certainly have some sort of small jack. Uh, yeah. there's, there's quite a few things you can use to... Something, yeah. Be careful. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, I would always try to use something metal, even if you're in a very difficult situation. You know, one of the things about carrying all this stuff is weight, right? Yep. And you were talking about safety, and I think you want to think about how much weight you're putting in the yep. van. Yep. And really balance that all out but it is a good idea and I've spoken to folks out there who told me oh yeah I run into that problem I don't even wait for a tow truck I just get it I'll do it myself because I'll have it done in 15 minutes yep. and be back on my yep. way now in that Ford video mm -hmm. with the transit dropping the tire I, I gave you guys a little cheat cheater from mm -hmm. camping world or wherever mm -hmm. and it's that mm -hmm. little yeah picture that you guys put up yeah and basically it's like it's a little like, ramp you it's can like drive a comma up on. yeah and it goes like this. It's not gonna be great for your front tire. Mm -hmm. So if I wanna change this tire, I'm gonna put the comma, big mm -hmm. part down. Mm -hmm. Hey Lola, hey Hank, roll forward a couple, I'm standing back, roll forward a couple feet. That comma, provided you're on hard surface, concrete, gravel, it's not gonna probably work on grass. Mm -hmm. That's gonna lift this tire up just enough so mm -hmm. you can get access to the outside. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So it's a, it's a, very lightweight way to get the height that you need, right. but it's not gonna do much for you up front because okay. it needs a second tire close to get 
the tire up. Okay. I use it on my bass boat. We got a tire here and a tire here. I can roll this tire up, get this tire back, vice versa. But in a dually platform, if I wanted to change, here's the problem. I gotta take this one off to access yep. this one. So yep. that's it's not the perfect tool, but it's a 1495 Band-Aid mm -hmm. to get you further along to where you stop due to a tire issue. Yeah, absolutely. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is the the one of the purposes of the dualies, right? In my opinion. Yeah. In so my you, opinion. If one of those tires has a problem, it does, like the other tire is supporting it a little yep. bit. Okay, mm -hmm. when we first started, people, a lot of people said, I'm, I don't want dualies. And I'm like, oh, you know, a lot of B-Van buyers are first time buyers. It's more mm -hmm. braking, it's more acceleration, mm -hmm. it's a wider a wider mm -hmm. stance, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, we don't want rocks getting caught in here. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. like, okay. I, yeah, because I, I think some those are some guys who are going off-road. Sure, sure, and yeah, I yeah, understand yeah. that, uh -huh. but that's our thinking on mm -hmm. this, is we've got a higher chassis. Yeah. Um, if you notice, Nova, single rear, the shortest, mm -hmm. lowest center of gravity, if you will, mm -hmm. on the Mercedes. Mercedes and Ford are built a lot alike as far as their parameters, mm -hmm. um, both dualies. Yeah. And, and I like it. it you yeah. don't, you really can't tell the difference. Um, well, there's, there's give and take with everything. Like I've driven something that's not a dually in the back and lifted mm -hmm. and everything. And, and, and also on knobby or tires, yep. that is different to drive down the highway. Understood. It's, it's awesome off road, yep. but you know, a little loosey goosey. Yep. Driving that. So this, the thing with the dualies and being lower and everything, you're on the highway, wind and all yep. that kind of stuff, this is way more yep. comfortable. So now, straight up. This is not a dually mm -hmm. that comes out like a Ford mm -hmm. or a Dodge. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of that main wheel is way inside mm -hmm. the chassis. So mm -hmm. we're not dually. Mm -hmm. We're a hidden dually, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I mean, if you looked at it, as a layman, you might not catch it. There's a second tire back mm -hmm. there. So, and then another thing uh, that we should get into here in the video. So, like you, we said it in the beginning, this is a transit, right? Yep. So, with the Sprinter van, you do have a full-size spare, right? Yes. But now the Pro, the Nova won't have a spare, a bit a full-size spare. Correct. Nova okay. won't have a full-size spare, and mm -hmm. I'm playing around with a couple ideas on how to circumvent that um, because you know it just makes sense to have a spare if I'm sitting here talking about safety, but mm -hmm. I can't get a spare um, that is applicable on generator units. Yeah. It's only ac applicable on lithium units. Oh, I see. When the yeah. generator's out, yeah. then I can put the spare in. Yeah. So Ford Mercedes, full spares. That's one of the big reasons why Ford's, the rear bath does so well, mm -hmm. the Ford rear bath. Mm -hmm. It's the only rear bath chassis um, that you can get with a spare tire. Oh, okay. Okay, that's one of the things. It's mm -hmm. the only all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. Rear bath mm -hmm. versus yeah. some Dodge stuff. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Thanks a lot for hey, filling us always, in on that. Safety, safety. Yes. And I, I think Nick would like to know if there's any other Can, questions or yep, things yep. folks want you to answer, right? Yep. Um, on that, there was a question on the Beyond changes from 22 to 23 chassis. Um, I got the sales guys working on that. We'll have an answer to post by the end of the week. Okay. And I think. That's kind of it for right now. Yep. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, and we Thanks want yeah. it, the comments, guys. That's, that's, yeah. that's, of course, I like the videos. They're fun. Right. Um, but the comments is, you know, that's where it, uh, we know where information is needed. So yeah. uh, anything we can help answer, please Absolutely. let us know. All right. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Thank you.